gonna take a look at it here in our full screen view and I'm thinking that this is actually quite our texture now so we got the wear and tear in the places where we want it to be we got all our base layer materials in place and we have a ton of extra information that we stamped in so if you remember at the beginning we were talking about whether to have our paint here as a metallic material or not and this is something that I was saying we can decide later on and I just want to show you what I meant with that so now that we have everything done here let's go back here to our steel gun painted material and turning that on and off doesn't seem to make big difference if we are zoomed out but if we zoom in we can see that this is because we have our fill layer here also set to a gray tone so if we disable that then it becomes clear this here is our steel gun painted and now what we can do with this material is we select the folder press ctrl D to duplicate it and then I'm gonna call it alternative metallic version always good to give it the proper names and now what we can do is go into our properties and then let's just see what happens if we turn it all the way from being non-metallic to metallic because remember if we look at it here in our metallic view right now this is non-metallic and we only get a bit of information where we have our metal edge wear so if we put that all the way to being metallic now we can actually see that this also reflects you on our map so let's look at it here in our material view and you can see how turning that to metallic automatically makes everything more dark this is just the way that it works with the metallicness in PBR and in that case it makes it almost like a pitch black you could say like well maybe that's the kind of look I'm after but in general what we saw in our reference images it had different color tones that were mostly more in the mid gray to dark gray regions so we could either now change our color to being a bit more bright or what we could also do is go over here to our metallic and then put that here to let's say 0.5 so we have it 50 50. so now if we toggle here to our metallic view this is not a uh, black or white but we actually have some mid-tone for it so that just adds a bit of metallicness to it and might be the right kind of a look that we want to have here for this paint if you look here at our metal edge wear, you will find that where it fades out to the side, it also has some mid-tones if we look at our metallic channel. So when PBR was new, people were always saying you should either put it to completely black or white to define the metallicness. But in reality, it's not really a problem to also add like some mid-tone to our metallic channel and for now I'm gonna stick to that version later we can always decide when we do the final export whether we want it to be that way or maybe switch it back and now what we can do is carry on with our other attachment pieces so what I want to do is take everything that we have now on our revolver and then we're gonna copy and paste these materials onto our remaining attachments so first of all let's select the base layer here at the bottom we can also re-enable it by the way but then we're gonna select everything that's going up here 
We don't need the bullet and we also don't need the normal details and text, but everything up to here, the global wear and tear. So with these selected, let's right click and say copy layers. Now as the next thing, let's do our flashlight. Let's go onto that layer. And in here, we already have a few things. We can, by the way, delete this layer. And then on that, let's right click and say paste layers. So now the good thing is that we already have all our wear and tear and all these materials that we already established. And we can just reapply them here to these attachments. I'm gonna also get rid of this layer one here. We don't need that. So as we work on that, let's just go through it one by one here. And since we wanna do the wear and tear at the end, I'm just gonna disable it for now. So let's hide both our global wear and tear and also the edge wear. And then we just want to make sure that on these black masks, we don't have any information on it that comes from the revolver. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to override all these masks. So that way we basically reset everything to its default value here. And then we can do individual masking on it. So there's actually some folders that we can get rid of. For example, the iron forged. We might just get rid of it because we already have some other metal folders here, such as our darker metal parts. This one I'm going to keep. By the way, you can always disable a mask by pressing with shift on it. That way you can sort of like look inside. With a black mask on it, we don't see that right now. But let's also get rid of this one here, the brighter metal parts, because we don't really have that on there. And then I want to start here by making use of the darker metal parts. And I'm going to go over here to our UV selection. Let's go to our element mode. And I'm going to select these elements here that we want to be metallic. We can then also go over here into our brush. And let's also take care of these details that we were stamping on earlier. So let's find the right size. And then the same over here. And then we can also take this piece here. But for that, I'm going to go back here to the UV mode. Those are the only elements that we want to be metallic. And then here on the back, we have quite a few plastic or rubbery parts. I'm going to disable our revolver so that we are seeing what we're up to here, especially on the top. And now let's continue by working on that mask. And what I want to do is add a fill layer in here. And just for the moment, I'm going to put it to being red. So what that means is that if we are now working here on it, we see where we apply our masking in a better way than having that in its original color. So we can start by adding those elements here and they both share the information. So we only need it once. And then let's carry on here. Actually, we can keep being here in that mode because this element we were unwrapping like that. But now we also have to take care of this here. So I'm going to do that in our UV view. And this here is the area where we want that to be. So let's go over to the brush. And then let's put that to UV. And I'm just going to make it full screen to see it better. And then let's 
make that connection here. I think that came out quite nice. Oh, and then here on top, we also have it. So now we just got to make sure that the tiling comes out right. And in that case, it worked fine. So what I mean is just make sure you don't have like any small steps there. So there is a bit more of it here on these regions. This one here, we also want to be rubber. So let's go back here to this part. And I'm going to go back here to the full screen for that. Going to make the brush really small. And then let's take that over here to that side. And there's a bit more at the bottom. And now with a black brush, I'm just going to fix that a little bit here where we have the seams. By the way, we can also, if we press Alt, we can rotate it. And then with Shift, we can lock it in like that. So sometimes maybe it's easier or more convenient to do that vertically. even though it doesn't really make much of a difference. So now we also have this part here defined as rubber. Let's go in here and then turn that off. And here's our rubber under it. So what I want to do is also add this button here to the plastic parts. That way we also have some more contrast on here. And now let's take a look at this base material that we have for our painted layer. And if we compare that here with our revolver, we will see that the tiling is much smaller than it is here. So let's go to the roughness channel. And here you can also see it that it's repetitive looking versus our revolver where it's much bigger. So I'm going to go here into the channel for that. And remember, we have two versions. So let's just fix it for both of them. Right now, we're looking at this one here, the alternative metallic version. That's the one that's active and on top. And now if we go here to that layer, and we put the scale down, then this becomes bigger. And this is more how it's supposed to look versus if we tile that too much, you can see it becomes repetitive. So let's see at one. I think it's actually still quite big. So I'm going to put it to 0 0.5. So now it's definitely matching more the overall look that we also have established already here for the revolver material and just looks more realistic. So now let's take a look at our metal edgeware. I'm going to hide the revolver again so that we see only the flashlight. And you may have already spotted it. We have some issues here on our metal edgeware that we were copy and pasting. And it's because the input maps are still taken from the revolver and not from the flashlight. I'm not sure if that's because we were baking in Marmoset and then imported the textures. And as you can see here, it says revolver and not flashlight. So we could just swap that out everywhere. But in that case, I'm just going to overwrite everything that we got in there, reassign a black mask. And we're just going to make use of our smart masks to get a nice look here for our wear and tear. I want to be using the paint old. And this one, I really like the look. It's just that it's way over the top right now. And what we can do is go into our properties. And then let's scroll up here 
to where it says global balance. And I'm gonna bring that down to 0 0.18. And now we only have it in a few selected areas. One thing I wanna do is go to our base metal for that edgeware and I wanna make it a bit more dark. I think right now it's a bit strong here on the contrast. So darkening that up will make it blend better. On our white mask, I wanna get rid of that edge wear that we have around our cylinder. So let's do that. So now one thing we must not forget is that our rubber is not supposed to have any metal edge wear. So in that case, what we have to do is putting that under the grip folder, which by the way, we should probably just rename to plastic. So having that folder under it makes sure that we don't have any metal edge wear on it. So now let's take a look here at our global wear and tear, which consists out of these three folders, the dust, the oil and the dirt. And in that case, it actually recognized the right input maps. So like I was saying with the metal edge wear, I'm actually not sure why it didn't recognize it. But here, let's for example, look in the mask editor for the dirt. You can see that it has the flashlight texture input maps. And that means it's working. And here for our global wear and tear, we can then also keep those folders. And of course, every object we have to decide whether we want to keep the current level of wear and tear or here in that case, I think we should bring it down a bit, the global balance and the same probably also for the oil. So I'm going to take a look at it here in our roughness channel. And yeah, I think it's forming up a bit too strong here. So I'm also going to bring that level down. That way we only have it in a few selected areas here. And then we have our dust folder. Let's see what that is doing. And I think also another case of bringing that level down a bit. I'm going to go over to the mask for it. And yeah, I think those areas that's exactly where I would expect a bit of dust to form up. And that is basically here our global wear and tear. And next we want to be adding some emissive information here to that. So first of all, let's find a material that fits there. And I'm liking that one here, the glass visor. And I'm gonna drag that, let's see, how it looks like under our wear and tear. And I think that works. So let's add a black mass to it. And then we are still in our polygon fill. Let's use the UV selection to select this area here. So now we already have a nice looking texture here in the case that the emissive would not be on. Imagine that flashlight to be something that gets triggered in the game to be either on or off. And this is gonna be our default look for when it's off. And then we have to also tell it to have some emissive information. And in order to do that, we have to go over here to our base and then we have to enable emissive but right now it's not actually in our texture set settings. So we want to go over here and then we're going to be adding emissive. So now we have a new channel here and then we can go back here. And now you see we have emissive here and let's go down here. We want to be putting that to a white. So imagine it really just as something that if we don't have it on, we have our default texture. And if it's on, then it looks like that. 
And then in the video game, you would also add a light source to it so that it actually also illuminates the areas. So now there's just one more thing that I want to do, which is to add a bit more interesting things here to that area. Because when I look at our reference image, I see that we have a bit of lines there. So for that, we can go back here to our normal details and then let's duplicate that screw folder. And I'm just gonna give it a proper name. Gonna add a black mask and then here with our UV tool and the UV selection, let's select that. And then of course we have to go in there and we want to be changing this around here. So I think that actually works. I'm gonna leave it. Let's see how it looks like with only one. But no, I think it's better here with a bit more of this tiling. And that is basically our flashlight here. Next, let's work on our scope. So let's enable it. So right now we're still on the flashlight layer here. Let's collapse all these folders and then we're gonna copy everything same as we did with the revolver. But this time we're gonna copy from our flashlight over to the scope. So we wanna go all the way here to the bottom and let's just start here with our metal base and then let's select everything here aside from the normal details. And if we press control, we can also deselect this one here. So these are the folders that we wanna copy over. And then let's go over here to our scope Let's collapse that folder that we already had and then we can right click here onto that base layer and then if we paste it, it's gonna copy everything above it. So here we have it. Let's hide the flashlight and let's see what we got here. So I'm already quite liking what I'm seeing here. Let's, same as before, hide our global wear and tear for now. And then let's also hide our edge wear. And let's just focus here on the main materials. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that these masks here are basically reset. So to that one, I'm gonna add a black mask again this one here also. And then on our edgeware masking, I'm gonna override the white mask. So now let's go into the plastic one and then let's select this piece here. So there's already a bit of wear and tear here in that folder. And let's see where we got that. It has a bit of height information and I'm just going to turn that off. And also I want to brighten that up a bit here. So I'm going to put that all the way to white. It's set to multiply so it behaves a bit differently as if it was set to normal. And also I think that would benefit from some more roughness information here. I'm going to make that more glossy. So that would be the first thing. And then also what we can do is make that a bit darker here on the plastic. So around here, I think looks good. And now let's see for our other parts here, the ones that we could define as metal. So in that case, once again, I'm gonna be in the element mode and remember the way that we unwrap that, this one here, if we select it, it's gonna apply it to all the others too because it's sharing the UV information. 
So this one and then also this one here shares it. And then I also want to have this one here defined as metal going through here. And then since we're at the metal, let's go over here, take our brush and let's also stamp on that piece here. Let me just try to find the right size for it. This needs to be a white brush and then we stamp that in here as being metal. Let's take a look at it here in our metal channel. And now, right now, I think this is a bit too bright looking here on that metal. So let's take a look inside here. So if you remember, this metal consisted out of different layers because it was a smart material. And we have this edges layer here basically as an additional wear and tear already in that folder. So that's kind of responsible for brightening everything a bit up. And here in that case of our scope, I actually want to turn that to a more dark tone here. So that way we have a bit of extra contrast coming from it. Let's take a look here at our roughness. I'm thinking that actually already works. That gets the job done. And then what I was thinking is that these areas here, they might benefit also from being pure metallic, but let's give it a bit of a bronze or a copper kind of a look. So for that, I'm gonna copy that whole folder and I'm gonna call it copper tone metal. I'm going to overwrite that black mask and then let's go over here to our UV selection. And let's just do it here for one piece first to see what it looks like. In that case, I want to disable our edges and maybe also the dirt. And then in here, let's change that here to something like that. I think that makes a nice extra contrast. Let's see how it looks like here with the dirt. Maybe let's just enable the dirt on that so it's not so saturated. And then let's just carry on here and let's select those things. Think I accidentally clicked somewhere. Let me double check that. No, I didn't. That's why the mask view is sometimes really useful because that way we only see what we're doing here on our current selection. And let's take a look at it. Yeah, I think that makes it look more interesting as it was before. So let's close that folder and then let's go back here to our edgeware masking. Let's enable that. And I actually quite like the look of it, but it's still a little bit too strong. So let's go in there. And also, I think we already did it, but make sure to have a white mask back on here so that we don't have any masking from when we did that on the flashlight. Now here in our mask editor, I want to bring down that global balance. So let's see. I think if we have it around here, we still have a bit of chipping, but it's not so strong. We have it here on some areas, especially here at the front. But I think overall this is looking pretty nice. And also remember, we're usually looking at it a bit more zoomed out than that. So I think that this makes for a nice metal edge wear. And then let's enable our global wear and tear. And then once again, 
in that folder we have our three different types of wear and tear that we can also reuse here. So we can already see that it looks like everything is working fine, but we can always double check that if we scroll down here in the generator and then we want to make sure that it has the right input maps. So usually we can already see if a generator works or not, but sometimes maybe you just want to double check. So earlier on the flashlight, we were putting the global balance down here for the dirt. Let's see what it looks like if we put it back up. So I do see we have quite a bit here at the front. And I think overall, it's probably a good idea to keep it, keep it a bit more down here. So I'm gonna go here in our mask view and I'm thinking that might actually work well. We have a bit of it here and then in our oil folder, let's take a look at this one and this is probably a bit too much. That's why it's worth to go into these masks because that kind of reveals that we have quite a lot of oil here on that one. And while it's nice to have a bit of this gloss on it, it's probably too much here. Or not only probably, I think this is too much. Let me put the contrast down and also our level. And that way, I think that should work. But what I'm gonna do is go over here in our roughness view and you can see where that builds up here. So I'm gonna put our dust layer on top of it because that way it's a bit more subtle. The dust is basically now on top of our oil. On the revolver, we decided we didn't wanna have it that way, but here I think that might result in a better look. So now we put the oil down a bit and now we have the dust on top. So let's take a look at our dust. I'm gonna go also here in the mask view and the question is whether this is too much or not, but actually I'm thinking this isn't too bad. Maybe a little bit less. Yeah, I think that works quite well. That way it's more visible here in some areas as opposed to having it going through here all the way. That gives us a bit more extra contrast and makes it more noticeable actually. So in that case, less is more. So I'm thinking for the dirt, I'm gonna go here into that gradient and maybe I am gonna put that here to more of a gray. That way we still have a little bit here of that color coming from that one, but making it a bit more subtle here. And now we have pretty much done our wear and tear. There is one more thing, which is this element here. So let's put a bit of a color on there as well. So I'm gonna have a new folder here on top of our wear and tear and I'm gonna call that lens. So in here, I'm gonna have that fill layer and let's put that to a red because we have a red dot scope here most likely. So in that case, we also want that lens to have a little bit of a red on it. So let's put that brush down. I'm not gonna make it a sharp brush. I'm actually gonna have it like this here. And now let's zoom in here. I'm gonna take that even further down. 
the softness and then we want to stamp in here like that. So that makes it a bit more interesting. Just adds the illusion that there's more going on. And now that I zoom out, I'm thinking that this edge wear might actually benefit from being a little bit less. So I'm going to go back here to our mask editor. And instead of working with a global balance, which we can also do, I want to go down here to our image input. And here you see the slider for the brush pattern. I want to crank that up a bit. So I'm going to have it here at 0.3 and you can see how this just minimizes this repetitive looking pattern that we had here. And we still have enough wear and tear where it matters here around these smaller selected areas. So earlier here on this plastic button, I made it a bit more dark. And now that I look at it, I think that was actually not the best idea in terms of contrast. So I want to go back here to that folder for the plastic. And the first thing I want to do is also bring the roughness back down a bit so that it's not so glossy. So I think around here looks better for this kind of a button so that it actually looks like it has a bit of grip there. And then also I want to make that a bit more bright again here. This way we have a bit of more color variety there compared to our painted steel material in the background. So let's unhide our scope lens object. And then I'm going to drag and drop the glass visor smart material on it. So the moment we assign something to a different material ID group, it will also automatically switch over to it. In that case, I want to go back here to the red dot scope once more, because I want to copy the wear and tear that we have on our red dot scope and then we're going to paste it onto our scope lens. But there's also another thing here for this lens that we were just creating here, that red color. If we look at it here in our roughness information, then we don't see any difference to the other materials. And I actually want to crank that up all the way. So that way it might not really show here from that angle or from that light, but there's just a bit more information going on there. So now let's go and take this global wear and tear folder, copy layers, and then let's paste that on top of our visor folder here. So right now we're not seeing much from it. Let's go to our roughness channel. That's where we see it better. And the reason for that is that this is a very flat surface. So the curvature input maps don't really have much to work with here. And what that means is that we want to go into these parameters here. Let's go to the dust. And then let's bring up the dirt level. And now here we start seeing a bit of it. And I don't really want that to be too much. Maybe we leave it even here. Let's take a look what that looks like here with our material. I quite like that it's so glossy. But let's go back here to the actual properties of that because what I don't want is to have a color on it. Even though I quite like this color, we're going to control that in a specific shader then later in the game. So I'm going to put that here to like a neutral gray around here. And then later in the game engine, we can control both the opacity as well as our color. And that way we don't have to be concerned about putting like uh, alpha information on that lens because this is something that we want to fine tune later and the same we want to do with our color. 
So if you decide you want to have it like maybe this tone, then it's really as simple as changing it to that. And the same goes also for our opacity. So the dirt folder, I'm going to delete it. And also we don't want any oil on that. So everything is driven here from that dust. And I think we can leave it like this here. This is enough roughness here for that because mostly we want to be able to really see through it later on. And this is just going to add a bit more to the roughness. So now that we did all the texturing for the revolver, our lens, our scope and our flashlight, let's just re-enable everything that we already did to see our final composition here. And we are gonna take a look for some final tweaks before we do the export. But there is still one thing that we haven't worked on yet. And that is this one here, the red dot scope dot, which right now only consists out of a small plane. So in order to get some red dot on there, we're gonna make use of alpha information. Now, in order to do that, we have to go over here to our shader settings and we wanna switch this here from our metal rough. This is the default one. And it seems to be a new one ever since Adobe took over. Before, I think it was this one here. Wait, where is it? PBR Metal Rough was the default. I'm not sure why they changed it, but the one that we want to have is this one, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. So let's enable that. And now what we have to do is go over to our Texture Set settings. And then here in our Channel Information, we want to enable Opacity. And also we have to re-enable the emissive. And now that we have that, we are able to actually put some alpha information here onto that red scope dot. So let's get back to the layer tab. And then we're gonna have a base layer here. And this one, let's put it to a black color but the thing is, we're going to enable our opacity on it and we're going to crank it all the way up. And you can see how this disappears then. So black means that it's completely disappearing. And now if we put a new layer on top, we can then add a mass to that. And this one, we have the alpha information then put to a white. So if we go here into the properties for it, you can see this is white. So now if we go to our mask and then it's a little bit hard to see because it's so small. Let's put the brush down and let's go over here to our split screen view. And now what I want is to actually keep the brush here with this faded look. I don't want to have a hard brush. And then we just have to actually, let me go to the full screen view to be more exact. Then we just have to make sure that the borders here are matching. So that's why I have the brush really big right now. And then I'm just gonna make it a bit more small and stamp down here. And maybe let's stamp down a few times to make sure we really have this captured here. Now you can see there's our dot and then as before with our lens here, we can control the color of it later. And with it being white, we can then make sure that we have a neutral color here. Otherwise, if you want, you can already put color in it now, as you can see here. But I think we should have it here as some neutral color and I'm just going to leave it here at a white. So that way we can decide later what color we want to have on it. So let's get out of this split screen view. And 
there is one thing that I noticed, even though it's not really visible here on that lens. But if we go back here and we take a look at our glass visor material, this one, it comes with some emissive information, which is this layer here. And I just want to delete it so that we don't run into any scenario where we have emissive information that we actually don't want to have. I'm going to also go here to the flashlight because we also applied that material here to this part. So the emissive that we have on here is the one that we actually want to have. But then let's also delete this layer here, which does nothing. So right now we have emissive information here coming from the color that we assigned here. If we put that to a black, you can see this is what it looks like without. We have our wear and tear and then we have this nice gloss, but we want to have the emissive on here. So let's leave this here as it is. And now let's take a look here at our final composition. So what I like to do whenever I get close to the finishing steps or you could say export, is that I like to take a good look at everything that we have. And then I usually get some ideas of things that I might still want to fix. So in that case, it always makes sense to write down something here and to read me or else, you know, like maybe you already saw some things while we were working on it and it's just good to keep track of that because otherwise you might forget about it and then you texture, you export, you upload it to ArtStation and then you look at your renders and like, oh, I forgot this small step that I was thinking about. So that's why it makes sense to always have this sort of like a post-mortem analysis and write everything down that you might still want to fix. And in my case, I spotted those things here, small fixes, but they're going to have an impact on our overall look. So the first thing that I want to do is go back here to the flashlight. We're already on the layer. And if you remember, we were fixing the tiling here for the metallic paint, but I forgot to do the same thing here for the painted version. So I want to go in here, go to our base. And then here where we have the parameters, if you remember, we put that to 0 0.5. So now we have that. And by the way, I made my mind up. I actually want to use the non-metallic paint and not the metallic. And the reason is that all my previous work, I also had it like that, where then our painted metal is non-metallic. Here you can see it in the metallic view. And I just don't want to change it now because I might produce more weapons and then have another weapon pack and I just want to be consistent there. However, there is going to be one exception. I want that cylinder here to keep on having this metallicness in it because the cylinder looks different to me than the rest of the gun. So that's going to be the exception, but I'm going to show you that later. Let's continue here with our flashlight first, because there's one more thing that I wanted to do. I want to add rubber here to this element. So I'm going to go over here to our plastic. And now let's just go over here to this one. And then here in the polygon mode, not the element mode, just polygon. I'm going to have this whole selection. And now it's down here. I'm going to go over here to the brush. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put it to UV. And then I'm going to go over here to the full screen and just fix it where we have that seam here like that. 
So now it just makes it a bit more interesting, more contrast. So I think that suits it well here. By the way, you can also keep it here as the metallic version. It's completely up to you. If you prefer that look, by all means go for it. It's just my personal decision on it. So now I just have to do the same thing here on the red dot scope. Let's get back to that layer because we copied those materials. That means that this fix here with the tiling, I also have to do it here. So let's find the layer. Here's the steel gun painted metallic and here's the non-metallic. And this one as before, I'm gonna put it to 0.5. And another thing that I want to do here is make that a little bit more dark. It might not be very noticeable, but I want to have it around here just to change it up a little bit. So that would be the fixes here for this and the flashlight. And now let's take another look here at our revolver. So it once again depends on what kind of reference image we're looking at. It can look different, but especially here on these reference images, it looks to me like that cylinder here has a different color tone than that. And it also looks overall a bit more metallic. So what I'm going to do is go back here to our revolver layer and I want this one here to continue being the metallic version, but the rest of the revolver, I'm gonna put it to the non-metallic. So it takes a moment to load. And let me just collapse the folders that we don't need. Now here we have our where is it? Steel gun painted, this one. So if I toggle that off, we get this look here. What I want to do is add a black mask here to it. That will get rid of everything. And then I'm going to go over here to our element mode and select only that piece here. So now the whole cylinder has this metallic paint on it. And now the difference is to our reference we were just looking at that this actually looks more bright than this. And I actually like that. So I'm going to try to get that a bit more matching. What that means is in this steel gun painted alternative version. I'm going to go over here to our base. And then I want to bring up the brightness a bit on it. So maybe I even have it around here. Remember anything with metallicness on it automatically is a bit more dark. So in that case, I have to compensate for it. So now we already have some contrast here that is a bit more dark, but I think we could make it even more dark by going into this layer now. And then let's go to the base and let's see what we can do here. I'm going to go here to that second color. Remember it consists out of two. Gonna put that down a bit. We don't want it to be like all the way down. But let's just add a little bit more. Let's take a look here into our color. And here we can clearly see it on the albedo. I probably don't want to make it more dark than that. Actually, it might almost be a bit too much. So I'm going to put it back up a bit. And also maybe for the rest of the body, Let's see what happens if we put the roughness down. I don't want it to be that much. Wait, let me undo that. So this is what we had before. 
I'm gonna put it maybe to 0 0.45. So that adds just a little bit to what we had before. It makes the cylinder a bit more glossy. But that also means we have a bit of contrast there. So I'm thinking this is actually the kind of look that I want to go with. And now there is another thing that I want to do on the revolver that is going to have quite the impact. I want to have an alternative edge wear on it. So the reason for that is I'm quite liking the edge wear look that we get here from this smart mask that we were using. And I want to see what that would look like here on our current revolver. So let's go over here to where we have the edge wear. It's this one here. And then I'm going to press Ctrl D. Takes a moment to load. And then I'm going to call that edge wear masking alternative. So what I sometimes like to do is to try out different styles. And that doesn't have to mean that we delete the old one. We spend quite a bit of time working on that edge wear. So instead of getting rid of it, I'm going to duplicate that folder. And then we can try out different looks here on that alternative folder. So I'm going to hide the one that we have under it. And then remember here at our smart masks, we were applying the paint old to our flashlight and also we have it on the scope. And since I'm quite liking that look, it's a little more subtle than what we have currently. I want to see how we can make that look here on that revolver. So I'm going to go here into our metal edgeware mask and I'm going to delete these generators that we have here on it and only leave the paint on it. Remember, we have that line and we want to keep that in place. So then what we can do is drag that mask here on top of it. And now all we have to do is drag the mask editor where this effect is coming from under our sharpen layer.